If you thought advanced humanoid robots in homes were still a distant future, think again. Robotics company 1X has taken a huge step forward with their neo-humanoid robot, which, according to CEO Brent Bornich, is now ready for testing in actual homes. Uh, the key for 1X and their new Neo uh, robot is, as you said, bring the robot first to market in the home. And so that's what we tried to focus on the conversation with Brent. You're going to hear. Yes, testing in homes. In episode 166 of the Robot Report podcast, co-hosts Mike Oitzman and Steve Crow interviewed 1X CEO Brent Bornich. And you won't believe what he had to say about the Neo robot's home testing. So what can we expect from the Neo robot? What makes it stand out? And through the lens of Brent Bornich, what would life with the Neo robot in our homes look like? Let's dive straight in. Recently, 1X launched Neo Beta, their second generation of humanoid robots and the company's first legged platform. 1X's mission has always been clear to develop an abundance of labor and scale the population of humanoid robots. But the Neo Beta represents a big leap forward. It's not just another stiff, clunky robot. It's bio-inspired, designed to move naturally and safely work around people. This is a huge milestone for 1X as they move from developing concepts to actually bringing humanoid robots into real consumer homes. But let's face it, when it comes to humanoid robots for households, it becomes a complex topic for many reasons. One of the biggest concerns here is safety. I mean, no one wants a robot malfunctioning in their home, becoming a risk to safety or property, right? That's exactly where 1X stands out with their Neo robots, and they're taking a different approach, testing these robots in homes. Because really, where better for them to be trained than the place they're actually designed for? So, why test Neo robots in actual homes rather than something like a simulation? It all comes down again to one critical factor, safety. According to 1X's CEO, Bernd Bernick, safety is the cornerstone that allows us to confidently introduce Neo Beta into homes, where it will gather essential feedback and demonstrate its capabilities in real-world settings. This year, we are deploying a limited number of Neo units in selected homes for research and development purposes. Doing so means we are taking another step toward achieving our mission. 1X CEO Brent Bornich explains on the podcast what he aims to achieve with the Neo robot in the labor force. Because our mission is to create an abundance of labor. And if you look at the aging demography of our population in the West, uh, the amount of kids we're having and everything else, it's becoming abundantly clear that we're going to run into some problems. Both over here where I'm now in uh, San Francisco area and also back in Norway, if you think about healthcare, elderly care, and in, ge in general, just being able to take care of our population as we age. Uh, but then you have the second order effect of this, which is the amount of labor that is done today by this amount of people that has to be done by this amount of people. And it's going to require us to have an improvement in productivity across society that we have never before seen in human history. If we're going to keep increasing our standard of living, and that's something we really think we should. should. Did you catch that? Brent explains that with NEO, the goal is to create an abundance of labor, where there are enough robots capable of handling repetitive and boring tasks, tasks that could also be hazardous for humans. Another key goal for the NEO robots is boosting productivity not just in the labor force, but also in homes, with the ability to scale up the number of robots deployed. And another point to highlight here is scalability. Brent emphasizes the importance of scalability and why it's necessary for NEO's success in transforming labor across industries and homes. So, what difference can we expect from the NEO robot? According to Brent, intelligence comes from diversity. What he's really getting at here, especially with the NEO robot, is that testing them in different homes and settings will allow them to learn how to navigate various kinds of environments. Still on the need for diversity, Brent explains that Neo needs to be in a home, among people, to achieve intelligence that's more similar to humans. Think about it. Humans are diverse. We have different cultures, languages, and ways of doing things. And to be realistic, Brent's idea here is pretty genius. He recognizes that diversity and understands the need to train neo-robots in different settings, homes from various cultures, using different tools, 
and adapting to unique environments. Wouldn't it be amazing if, in the future, you received a neo-robot from a relative in another country, speaking a different language with completely different cultural habits? And yet, you wouldn't need to reprogram it. It would already know how to adapt to your home. That shows how intentional One X is about creating humanoid robots that are flexible and adaptive in any scenario, no matter how diverse. Cool, right? Now, what are your thoughts on this? Let us know in the comments, and let's keep the conversation going. From everything we've learned about the Neo robot, from being trained to handle practically any task to its potential to reshape labor, you might think Neo is a consumer-focused robot, right? Well, if that's what you were thinking, I'm sorry to tell you, but you'd be wrong. Neo isn't designed like a typical consumer tech product, unlike AI tools such as ChatGPT or Alexa. And honestly, this speaks volumes about the unique and bold approach One X is taking with humanoid robots. We can take the car or we can take the uh, computer or if you want to take something that's more, uh, more modern, we could even say open AI, right? Like they tried really hard to scale an enterprise. And then in the end, they kind of gave up and they launched ChatGTP, and everyone used it. And everyone was like, oh, this is so useful. Figured out all the use cases, started bringing it to work. And now they're doing really well in enterprise because there was a lot of bottom-up pressure to figure out how can we remove the constraints so we can actually use this in enterprise because it's so useful. But that pressure came bottom-up. And I think this is like a general trend in technology. So it's not, not just about us. It's about deploying something disruptive that doesn't exist today. Well, when we posted the video of Neo, and the beta launch a couple of weeks ago, uh, as you can imagine, we got a lot of comments on the on on that. Uh, many of which were like, "When can we get one?" But another one that w was a pretty common comment was that, "Oh, it's just a guy in a robot suit." And I, I think that's a testament to how smoothly Neo moves, and even to the design uh, prior to that of Eve. Uh, and so, can you talk a little bit about? Uh, your principles of humanoid robot design, because a lot of the other robots that are out there are a little bit blockier, a little bit, you know, less human friendly in a sense. Uh, what are you looking at as you came on the hardware side of the design? And it, it goes back to the mission. So, like, if you're going to deploy into the home, your robot needs to be pretty affordable, and it needs to be safe. The conversation now shifts to Neo's core design principles. And trust me, One X isn't messing around when it comes to this. They're putting real thought into ensuring Neo checks all the boxes. Affordability, safety, and even down to the texture of its body. No detail is being overlooked, and that's how you know they're serious about making sure Neo is not just functional, but also something you can trust to have in your home. Affordability and safety go hand in hand when it comes to robots like Neo. As Brent mentioned in the interview, it's not just about being affordable for everyday users. There's also a significant focus on safety, not just for the humans around the robot, but for the robot itself. Imagine a robot that can identify hazards, navigate without causing damage to its surroundings, or even to itself. This level of safety is crucial for its successful integration into households. Another important principle here is energy efficiency. The more efficient the robot, the more energy it has to perform tasks. Simple, right? Brent also touches on something that sets Neo apart from other robots, its softness. It may not seem like a big deal at first, but when we think about humanoid robots, we often think of hard metal components that make physical interactions awkward or even impossible. Most robots are built to be functional, but they lack that human touch. The Neo robot, however, is different. Now imagine this. In a moment of joy or sadness, you rush to hug your robot companion, and it's not this cold, hard object, but something soft, almost like a human or a pet. That's what true companionship should feel like, right? Not just a robot that follows your commands, but one you can physically interact with in a natural way. And speaking of passive safety, Brent explained that if something goes wrong with the Neo robot at home, the risk of injury is kept to a minimum. He even made an analogy to humans. We bump into each other all the time, but we instinctively know how to avoid collisions by either slowing down, speeding up, or standing still to prevent an accident. Now imagine that same ability in Neo. For example, 
If you and Neo suddenly cross paths at an intersection in your home, how does it avoid bumping into you? Well, thanks to its safety protocols, Neo can quickly assess the situation and take action to avoid collision, making it safer for everyone. Of course, as with all AI technologies today, there are ethical concerns, even with a promising robot like Neo. So, what is One X's approach to addressing these ethical issues? In the end, One X isn't just creating robots to compete with others. They are truly redefining what it means to build humanoid robots that are fully functional and safe in our homes. One of the top priorities they've tackled is safety, addressing it with careful strategy and depth. Plus, they understand that these robots shouldn't break the bank. With a focus on affordability and scalability, the Neo robot is shaping up to be an advanced, sophisticated, yet simple companion designed for real human interaction. And speaking of advanced robots, have you seen the world's most advanced robot? Ameka's Bloomberg interview? If not, you really need to check it out here.